directorial first feature from Yes Man, yes Man co-writers Jared Paul and uh, Andrew Mogul. And it stars Jack Black, who, whenever I say Jack Black, you say... School of Rock. Thank you. You nearly didn't then. Oh, well, I was just thinking... totally what? spoilt that no, I was joke. trying to think of... Uh, but is this a quote from School of Rock that I'm supposed to come up with? But no, no, no. But just whenever I say Rock. Jack Black, you say School of Rock, because in School of Rock, Jack Black is absolutely terrific. There are things in which Jack Black is great. He's also great in High Fidelity. Yes. Which is, you know, an interesting adaptation of that book. Not so great in this. So he plays Dan Landsman, who is a schlubby guy who uh, is running the 20th reunion high school reunion uh, committee. He, he says he's the chairman. They all say, you're not the chairman. He's really annoying, really aggravating. Nobody likes him. After the meetings, they all go to the pub on their own. Well, the bar, because they're in America. Uh, and they tell him that they're not doing and then they do. Apparently, he has no friends. Therefore, something of a surprise when he goes home and he's married to Catherine Hahn and has, you know, very nice son and very nice house and which is one of those kind of those Hollywood things of this is the way that you draw an unsuccessful man is that he apparently has a very successful home of anyway he is watching a late night commercial and he sees an old school well not friend somebody he knows from school called Oliver Lawless who is now doing a commercial for a sun cream and he says this is the thing what we're going to do is we're going to get this guy we're going to get him to come to the high school reunion and then everyone else will come because nobody wants to come to the high school reunion he says I will get him and he's convinced that if he does manage to get Oliver Lawless he will become popular and so he fakes his way to LA he does indeed meet Oliver Lawless and tries to convince him to come to the high school reunion do you have any idea how many people are out here trying to do what you're doing and you know how many of them fail Good for you, dog. Just like in high school. Uh-oh. There's Lawless. What's he doing? Stepping back for the three? <laughs> Boom. So wish. <laughs> Fuck. I haven't thought about that in a while. Hey, you know what? You should come to the reunion. 20 years coming up. Nah, man, that's not my thing. Yeah. Damn. You must be crushing out out here with the talent level off the charts. I mean, the acting thing must help with the girls. Huh? Girls and guys. What with guys? Yeah. So the whole thing is, hey, he's so crazy and cool, and actually, you know, he he, he he's he's open-minded. He is polymorphously perverse. And the film then allows Jack Black to go out on the Raz with uh, Oliver and experience a whole bunch of things which he hasn't experienced before, you know, in terms of uh, uh, drugs and uh, high life and indeed some other things which he then uh, finds very hard. Getting a takeaway, that kind of thing. Getting a takeaway, yeah. exactly that, which he then finds very hard to assimilate when he comes home. By the time he comes home, he decides that he thinks that he doesn't want Oliver Lawless to come to the uh, reunion, but Oliver Lawless is not being stopped now and Oliver Lawless ends up coming to stay with Jack Black and his family and his young son. Now, I think that somewhere in the midst of all this, there is a subversive uh, idea going on, but it's so lost amidst gurning, cod, indie, comic sensibility as to be all but null and void. So what sounds like it ought to be, and I know a couple of people, a couple of people who I respect, incidentally, have reviewed this saying, yeah, you know what, this is an interesting take on bromances. This is a film that dares to go into areas that other films don't dare to go into. I felt it was much more a film that wanted to kind of uh, shackle together the charms of uh, Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion, which I love, and Chuck and Buck, which is really edgy and manages somehow to remind you of both of those films, but without getting anywhere near the wit, charm, sparkle, invention, originality, or indeed laughs of either. What you're actually left with is Jack Black playing a character who's meant to be really annoying, being really annoying, of broad comic strokes and, uh, you know, uh, narrative arcs so clumsily Hoik together that you keep going. Sorry, what? Where? We? We? Where? We? Oh, he, oh, fine. He's doing. He's doing that thing. There's a whole subplot going on about Jack Black has uh, scammed his way to LA by telling his boss he's doing this deal, and then if he doesn't do the deal, the boss is going to lose his company, and all these sort of completely badly handled plot strands. And in the middle of it, the thing that's meant to make you absolutely hang on and think this is all fine is that there is this quirky relationship between Jack Black and uh, James Marsden as the schlubby guy that nobody likes and the guy from school that everybody liked. And I kept, I just kept thinking of all those other, I mean, you remember um, uh, Gross Point Blank or 
you know, all those other movies which do that, you know, 20 year reunion, let's get everybody back together again. Let's get the old guys. And then, and then we sort of thrash out all the stuff that was going on in all those movies. I just kept thinking of, and the reason I kept thinking of them was because I was watching this and solidly not laughing. And at some points looking away and I'm not looking away, looking away because you just think this isn't coming together. Catherine Hahn actually spends a lot of the last third of the movie just looking horrified. And I, kind of understand why um it's weird i'd love to be able to tell you that actually what it is is quirky offbeat and weirdly subversive but actually it's cronky creaky and crushingly dull